work of your power and God you're so good God you're so And should this life bring suffering, my God, I remember what Calvary has bought for me, both now and forever. And God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. We're singing. forever God oh you were always good father always good nothing can change you are. 
Nothing can change who you are. Oh, nothing can change who you are. And you are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. And you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yeah, you are. in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, oh, you are, we may be a quark, promise keep light in the darkness, that is who you are, oh, we may be a quark, promise keep Light in the darkness, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, oh, oh. when we can see it, you're working. Even when we can feel it, you're working. Stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when we can see it, you're working. Even when we can feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when we can see it, you working. Even when we can feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when we can feel it, you working. Even when we can see it, you working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop. We make a walker. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Oh, you're a miracle walker. You're a miracle worker. I know I'm off again. Oh, you're a miracle working God. You are such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. You're a miracle working God. You are. Such an awesome God, such an awesome God, you're a miracle walker, miracle working God, you are such an awesome God, such an awesome God, oh, you're a miracle working God. awesome God, such an awesome God, you're a miracle worker, you're a miracle working God, you are such an awesome God, such an awesome God, yeah, you're a miracle working God, you are such an awesome God. Such an awesome God, oh, awesome God. Hey. Oh, 
awesome God. You're an awesome God, and we worship you, and we worship your holy name. You're a miracle working God. An awesome God, a miracle worker, awesome God, such an awesome God. Cause in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, we lift you up, we lift you up. Yeah, be lifted. 
that I am than any other name we lift you up oh we lift you up than any other name be glorified Jesus be glorified
Nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do Jesus at the center Everything revolves around you Jesus, you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heaven Jesus be the center all about you yes it's all about It's all about you, Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. We ask that you accept our praise. Accept our worship this morning. Receive our hearts to you this morning. We, we declare this morning that you are good. That you are always good. You are always good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we we'll worship. Glory. Let's begin to thank God. Let's begin to worship his name. Let's begin to exalt him, adore him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of everything and anything that we possibly do. Imagine, dream. God is our Father. He is great. He is awesome. He is excellent. Let's just begin to thank Him for the presence in spite of everything going on around us. We are here. We are here together through Zoom, through electronics to glorify His name, lift Him higher, to exalt Him, to spread His truth, not our words, not our experience. Not our thoughts, our logic on who God is, but the, the truth of God. Let's thank Him for this opportunity. Let's thank the Father. Father. Almighty God. The Father cares for his children. The Father loves his children. The Father wants his children to depend on him. Let's begin to remember that God is our Father. Let's begin to reconnect with the idea, with the notion that we have a burden bearer. We have a Father who loves and cares for us, who wants to listen to us, listen to our woes, our worries, our stress, and help us. Let's begin to thank the Father. Thank you, Father, for being my Father. Thank you, God, for being my Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for the creation of me. Thank you for the light you've given to me. Thank you that you want everything to return back to you, the glory, the honor, the adoration. Let's thank the Father, because even though we are here, it's all about Him. He, he created us for His glory. He created us for Him. It's not just about us. Yes, thank you, God, for me. Thank you, God, for life. Thank you, God, for me. Thank you, God, for my children, my child, my 
husband, my friends, my sisters. Thank you, God, for all of those. But now it's it's all about him. What are we doing for him? What are we doing for the father? When the child is uh, born, the father takes care of the child. But at some point, the child has to tend to either maybe join the family business or or, you know, taking care of the father when the father is in need, so as it were. God needs nothing from us but our life, our choice to give him our life, to serve him. Let's begin to reconnect with that idea that it's not just about where we work or where we live, but about what we are doing for the kingdom and the glory and the honor of God our Father. Let's meditate on that. Lord, Father, help me to keep your kingdom, your glory, at the forefront of my mind. That your name is exalted. That your name is glorified. That your kingdom is lifted high above everything and anything that I could ever do, dream, or imagine. That my thoughts are about you. My my life is to glorify you. The choices I make brings pleasure to you. That you are proud of me. That in the choices I make, I lift you high. I exalt you. I don't think of me first, for you have given me so much. But I think of you, Dad. I reverence you. I honor you. I glorify you. I esteem you higher than myself, higher than any other person. For you come first before anything else. Thank you, Father. Help me to be aware. There's a prayer point I heard a couple of years back, and it's stuck with me ever since then. Father, give me an awareness of your presence. Let's pray that, Dad, give me an awareness of your presence. From the moment I wake up to the moment I fall asleep, even while I'm dreaming and sleeping, give me an awareness of your presence. Let me be aware of you, Father. That the, when my, the, the world around me doesn't dull my senses, to you. Help me, Lord, to be aware of your presence consistently, persistently. Help me to be aware of your presence. Give me, Father, an awareness of your presence. Father, increase me. Increase my faith in you. Increase my knowledge, my light, my love, my desire for you. Help me, Lord, that from the moment I wake up, even while I'm asleep, my thoughts and my heart, my desires, run to you. When our heart is connected to the Father, our heart can be, it it, it manifests in our actions, it manifests in our thoughts. We please the Father when our heart and our desires and our actions please him as well. Let's thank the Father for today. Let's thank him for this chosen day that we gather every week to lift him high, to share the word. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. In the same vein, let's pray for today's sermon. Let us pray that the message coming comes from God, not from us, but from God. That he is pleased with the words that are shared today. That he is honored with the words that are shared today. Let's begin to pray. 
begin to talk to our Father. That the words today bring us closer to the truth of our Father. That the words today bring us closer to our Father, to God. That the vessel be the person that will bring these words speaks straight from God, speaks straight from the truth. God is glorified in everything. That God is glorified. Let's begin to round up. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the strength. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. We pray that you're glorified. We pray that you are honored. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. All right. Uh, good morning. Uh, ladies and gents, uh, I hope everyone is uh, doing well. Um, I hope we're all uh, growing in grace. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, first of all, for if you're not aware, we're, we're online simply because of the, uh, the new COVID uh, warning in Harris County and in Texas, all in general, right? So we're just like, oh, let, let's, let's be a little bit safer. So uh, our services are online uh, right now. And by the grace of God, we'll go back to location uh, soon enough. But for now, everything we're doing is online. And, uh, you know, so we, we glorify God for the opportunity to still come together and fellowship, even though, uh, you know, the, uh, COVID-19 is, uh, is, 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 is an enemy out here in the streets. Uh, so we thank God for that. Okay, so, um, well, let, let's pray so we can get started. Uh, let's pray. Let's get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. For, Lord, you're merciful. You're good. You're so, so good. God, regardless of what we do, who we are, how we view you, it doesn't change who you are, Lord. You are merciful and you have been ever faithful. So, Lord, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for your very identity. We thank you that you are not man. We thank you that you are not like us. Lord, we say, hallowed be your holy name. We come before you this morning, Father. We ask you to teach us. As we open your word today, may we see your word clearly. May, may we not be blind to what you're saying. May we not be deaf to hear you. But open our eyes, Lord. Open our ears to hear. That we'll receive from you this morning. And that you alone be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, good. All right, so um, so this morning we're looking at uh, a gospel, a gospel, okay, a gospel. Uh, and that A represents another, another gospel, okay? So we're looking at another gospel this morning. So let's go from the book of Galatians 1. All right, let's look at Galatians chapter one. And for today, we're going to look at from verse six. All right, so Galatians one from verse six. Um, messages like this are, you know, for days like this are the days when I, I would have wished to be able to have, you know, everyone together and look at your faces as we talk about some of these things. Um, so Galatians chapter one from verse six. And it says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Okay, so, so let's stop there for a second and let's just get some facts straight, okay? Let's put some things as facts, all right? Let's just look at a few things here. Number one, he tells them that they are so quickly deserting 
him who called them in the grace of Christ. And they are going towards a different gospel. So which means initially they had the right thing or they had the concept of the right thing, at least for these people, uh, for, the, for the church in, in Galatia. Um, so initially they, they had the right thing, but now they're deserting the right thing, okay? And he says to a different gospel, he says, not that there is another one. All right. So, and this is one of the interesting things about when people look at truth, right? Sometimes people think that truth is relative, all right? It's like, oh, there's this relative thing, you know, truth is what you make it, or it's what you decide truth is. Well, that's not really true, okay? Uh, if I go outside now, and I come back in, and I say it's dark outside, it doesn't change the fact that it's clearly bright. It doesn't change that. It just means I said it's dark outside. It doesn't mean the truth is any less true. It just means I choose to believe a lie. And I am now espousing a lie. I am now teaching a lie, or I am now sharing a lie, right? But the truth has always been there. So that doesn't make the truth relative. It just, it just means we are choosing to believe a lie. And this is what Apostle Paul is saying here. He says, not that there is another gospel, because there isn't. He says, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Jesus or the gospel of Christ. They want to distort it. So the idea is they come to the gospel, right? And they don't throw the gospel outright out. That is what's fascinating about it. They don't take the gospel and just toss it in the trash. No, they don't do that. They distort it. They tweak it. They change part of it. You know, they, they, they change the edges. So by the time you're looking at the gospel, it seems that it's the gospel of Christ. It looks like it. But it's no longer the gospel of Christ. It's now a distorted gospel that you just got, right? And this, and this was, was what they were doing. And this is, in the, uh, this is the church in, uh, in, in Galatia. And he says, and he says, verse eight, but even we, but if, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Okay. Um, now that word accursed, right, in the Greek is called anathema. All right, it's called anathema in the Greek. In Hebrew, it's called uh, uh, kerak, kerarem. So, so it's it's so that that's the Hebrew. So, and and the Hebrew is an Old Testament kind of uh, a word that was then translated to Greek to now mean anathema in Greek, and that was the idea um, that that you have been you have been separated to be damned. Or to be cursed by God, as in you know uh, something that is dedicated to God for total destruction. So you've taken out, you've separated, and you've put now on the scale for complete destruction. All right, and this was kind of like the highest form of um, uh, uh, a curse from God in a sense, you know. Um, so and that's what he's saying about those people. It's like even if an angel comes from heaven, if we and I love that, that he puts that there. It says, if anyone is teaching you a gospel contrary to the one that you received, let him bear, be a cause. It says, it says, it says, it says, even if we, I want you to think about this for a second. Apostle Paul comes and says, even if we, okay? Now, one of the problems that people have, right? And I've kind of seen this over, over the years um, with, different, with different teachings and different things and even how we perceive stuff. We think because someone was teaching the right thing yesterday, it means that they are teaching the right thing today. It's not true. Apostle Paul himself says, we. So that is, if I go back and I come back and I start teaching you guys, uh, uh, start teaching a gospel that is not what we initially taught, it says, let us be accursed. Even if an angel comes from heaven with glowing wings, saying, I am a servant of God, here is a different gospel. It says, let him be accursed. Now, that thing is very important because, um, you know, as, as, we, as we know, most times um, we, uh, uh, we don't esteem the gospel. Now, before we go on, I, I want us to look at something. Because what someone would say is this. Well, we are Christians. We already know the gospel. 
right? Like, I am a Christian. I already know the gospel. Why do I need, why are you talking about the gospel again? What is the point? Let's go to something new. Let's talk about something new. So let's look at the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 15. Romans 1, verse 15. Romans 1, verse 15. Now, this is Apostle Paul writing to the Roman church. These people are Christians. They are Christians. It's not talking to unbelievers. Here's what he says in verse 15. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. The question should then be, they're already saved by the gospel. Why is he eager to preach the gospel to them again? That makes no sense. Why would he go back and tell them about, why is he eager to preach? Remember when he talks to uh, the church in Galatia? Here's what he says. He says, if we or, any, or an angel comes to preach another gospel, but they are already, why are we preaching another gospel? Why are we even talking about the gospel? We are already saved. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not saved away from the gospel. Because we need to hear the gospel constantly. We need to, first of all, understand that the gospel is not just a simple one plus one is two. There are layers in the gospel that we need to understand. But sometimes we also need to remember one plus one is two. We need to understand the fundamentals of the gospel. We need to be reminded of what has, as, as, as Christ has done for us. We need to be reminded of who we are in Christ. We need to be reminded of these things, even as Christians. And then if we are not even Christians, we need to know of these things. So what you see with Apostle Paul here, you find out that the gospel was literally a part of the thing that was essential to his teaching. It was part of it. it, it whether it was an old church, a new church, wherever he went, he preached the gospel. And I think that that's a fascinating thing because sometimes when we hear someone talking about the gospel, we feel like, oh, no, come on, bro, let's go. Let's go to the deeper things. The gospel is the deeper thing. The gospel is deep. And we're going to look at a few of those things today. So here's what it says, right? Let him be accursed. We're looking at Galatians 1 from verse 6. Now it says, now let's continue from verse uh, 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you, a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Remember I said this is the, this is an ultimate curse. You've been set aside just to be uh, uh, for, for, for destruction. It says, as we have said before, so now we, I say to you again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Now we're going to look at the gospel they received, Okay. Um, let's just make sure that we understand what the gospel is. Verse 10. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I now trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So the point he's making there is this, right? Remember, just talk about the gospel. It's obvious that men don't want to hear the gospel. It's obvious that men are content with hearing um, a pseudo gospel. It's, it's obvious. But what he's saying is this. I am not here to please men. If I try to please men, I cannot be a servant of Christ. And that's what some of us don't get sometimes. You're not called to please men. You're called to please Christ. And, when, and, and, uh, and to be a servant of Christ. And when you are a servant of Christ, you will be a servant to men. Let me say that again. When you're a servant of Christ, you will be a servant to men. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you will be humble. You would bow. You wouldn't stand and say, look at me, I'm highly exalted. Instead, you will, you will, you will fall on your knees. You will serve men. That's the whole idea of being a servant. You will serve, right? But you're not serving men because you're trying to please men. You're serving men because you're a servant of Christ. But when you try to please men, you cannot be a servant of Christ. You, it just doesn't work because that means when a man doesn't want to hear something that Christ wants you to say, you will not say it. Why? Because you have to please that man. To you, you feel like pleasing men is your own way of showing love. 
but true love resides in God. So when we follow God, then we can truly show love. And sometimes it might not come in the way that men expect. But anyway, let's continue. Let's look at this. Now, verse 11, it says, for I would, it says, for I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. Okay. So here are a few things that we can get from this passage, right? Before we move on. Number one, people were leaving the gospel for something else that they, that they, that they liked. Okay. That's number one. Number two, there is no such thing as another gospel. There is just a distorted gospel of Christ. All right. So there's just a distorted gospel of Christ, which then comes off as multiple types of gospels, right? So there, there are a bunch of them everywhere, but it's just a distorted version of the truth. Okay. Which, which makes it a lot. Number three, what we know from there is this. Apostle Paul clearly tell, tells us that if he comes back to preach a gospel that is contrary to what he initially preached, let him be accursed. Which means it shows us that it's possible for someone to start off right and veer left. Okay? That's possible. The next thing we find out is this. Even if an angel comes from heaven to preach a contrary gospel, let him be accursed. Which means it doesn't matter the authority of the person. It doesn't matter how much you look up to the person. How, how holy you think this person is. Because if an angel comes down from heaven to preach a different gospel and Apostle Paul is saying, let him be accursed, then there is no man, no matter how holy he is, that should not be accursed for preaching a different gospel. So let's just put that down there in stone. Okay. Then here's the final thing that we see here. Apostle Paul's perspective is, I am not here to please men. I am a servant of God. And if I try to please men, I cannot be a servant of God. It just doesn't work. Okay? All right. So now let's uh, look at uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11 from verse 7. 2 Corinthians 11 from verse 7. And um, after looking at this passage, then we'll dive into... And what we need to learn today. 2 Corinthians 11, 1 verse 7. Okay. All right. It says, Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preach God's gospel to you free of charge? So he says, Hey, I, you won't charge for this. And, and here's what it says. It says, I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not, I did not burden anyone for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. It says, so I refrained and we refrain from burdening, from burdening you in any way. Verse 10, as the truth of Christ is in me, this boast of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. Okay. And, but and why? Because I do not love you. God knows I do. Okay. So what he's telling them here, right here is this. Listen, guys. You guys got the gospel. You got the gospel. And the gospel you got, right? The gospel you got was free of charge. I didn't take any offering from you. I didn't take any tithe from you. I didn't ask you guys to sponsor my ministry. None. I just came to you preaching the gospel. So much so that for my needs, other churches were the ones taking care of my needs, right? So it wasn't even you guys. You guys didn't even do anything for me. It was other churches that, that would help me out, right? And he says, guess what? I'm not going to take anything from you because you can kind of tell he knows how these people are. He knows how they are. It's like, I'm not even going to take anything from you. I'm not going to take a dime from you, you know? Uh, not now, not in the future. I'm not going to take anything from you. Now he says, and why? It's like, is this because I don't love you? It's like, God knows that I do. Because first of all, him coming to preach the gospel to them, 
God's gospel without taking anything from them, asking them for anything at all, even though he was in need of it, he didn't ask them for anything, shows that he loved them. And, and there's a realization that him asking something from, from them might come off like, oh, maybe is this, is this why he's doing this, da, da, da. So it's like, I'm not even going to do it. And that's one thing that is funny about the perspective of the gospel today. Nothing, nothing should shield the, should shield the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing. Nothing to shield the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which means if there is something that someone, you know, has an expectation of that would hinder the message of the gospel, guess what? Your job is to make sure that that path is clear. That there is nothing that they could hold against the gospel of Jesus Christ. That there is nothing that he could hold onto and say, well, this is why, da, 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 this is why I don't want to listen. There is nothing there. So our job is to be at peace with all men for the gospel's sake, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of Christ. If I cannot, and, and this one thing that our brother used to say, he says, um, if we have a conversation or anything, he says, if at the end of the thing, I can't give you the gospel, he says, there is something wrong. If we have a chat and at the end of the chat, I can't give you the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is something off. There is something wrong there. Like I have done something wrong, right? At the end of the thing, I should be able to give you the gospel. I should be able to say, hey, this is, this is what the gospel is, right? Now here's the thing. So then let's continue. And let's see what it says. Verse 12. And what I am doing, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Now you see why you can't just believe an angel that comes from heaven to preach another gospel. The differentiator here is not the angel. What differentiates an angel from light and an angel of darkness is not how shiny their wings are. It's not whether one comes in darkness and looks, and looks dark and yeah. No, that's not, that's not, it's the word of God, the gospel of Jesus. That is the differentiator, right? One would preach the gospel of Christ and another would preach a distorted gospel. That's how you know. It's not, it's not based off of well, this person has, this person does all the miracles in the world. This person is the most anointed person. It's none of that. It's all based off of the word. This is what Apostle Paul is telling us. Because here's what it says. Let's look at verse 13 again. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, verse 14. For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. So, no false prophet is going to come to you and say, hey, I am an angel of hell. No, they're going to look very righteous. They're going to speak very righteously. They're going to act righteously according to what you think a righteous person should be. Because that's why you would fall for it. That is why you will fall for it. It's going to be hard to differentiate between a, 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 a true minister of God and a fake. It's going to be hard. But here's the funny thing. There's an easy way. The gospel of Jesus. That is the one thing that differentiates us. When you look at the entirety of the gospel, because the gospel, like I said, it's not just one part. And we're going to look at a few of these things today. Uh, and maybe we'll continue next week, but we're going to look at a few of these things today. The gospel of Jesus Christ, it's not just one part. There are layers to it that continues in this. When someone starts going left on that and tells you, no, you know, no, 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 this is not part of the, the minute they start changing it, they start adding to the gospel or they start taking away from the gospel. At that point, it is no longer true. It is no longer true. Okay. So, so what we find here is this. I want us to break these points down. Number one. They are men, now, uh, and we cannot see that from verse uh, 12, uh, from 13 onward. 
there are many apostles that, that you know, that disguise themselves. They disguise themselves. That's what language uses. They disguise themselves. They wear the suit. They have the speech. They have the works, the so-called works. They have all those things, right? They disguise themselves. It's like, and, and Apostle Paul is, of course, of course they would disguise themselves because even the devil comes as an angel of light. So which means they don't come in darkness. They come in the glow of light. They come in the glow of of, oh, I am holy. They come in all the other package that you expect. They come in that package, all right? They come, they come packaged. And sometimes they seem like the most anointed men. They do that. But it says, it says, that's no surprise because if he comes as an angel of life, so he's, his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. You should underline that part in your Bible if you have that. Just underline servants of righteousness. They come as servants of righteousness. They serve righteousness, which means if you're coming as a servant of righteousness, everything you should teach should sound righteous, okay? You should teach about holiness, okay? Now, now, not all of them will teach about holiness. Some of them won't teach about holiness, but some of them will teach about holiness. That's the beautiful thing about it. Some of them won't teach about holiness. Some of them will teach about holiness. The point is, they should come based on our own, our own standard, what we think righteousness looks like. They will come like that. So if you're one of those people that believes, oh, you know what? I want God's, per- you know, I would just want to have a perfect life. Da, 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 da. They will come as that because that's your own view of righteousness. And they will teach you that. And you will accept it because that's what you want, right? If you're one of those people that believes, oh, I just want to hear about holiness. I just want to hear about holiness. They will come as that. They will teach you holiness. Or they will teach you steps for holiness. The five steps not to da-da-da. The 10 steps not to da-da-da. They will give you all the steps. And you will feel good. Yeah, it's a man of God. It's a man of God. Ooh, hallelujah. You will feel great. But it doesn't mean that they're true. All right? So let's clarify these things first. Let's find out what the apostle actually says. It's what scripture is telling us. All right? There's no way. Uh, um, it's, it's, uh, we live in a world of, of deception. You can't even trust what you see on Instagram today. You can't trust what you see on Instagram. You, you, you see somebody on Instagram, you're like, wow, da, da, da. You find out it was fake. Oh, wow. You know, you, 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 you know if, you're, if you're a young lady, um, you know, because uh, my wife is one of those uh, um, Instagram influencers. Uh, you know, I, I always use the finger because like, what are you influencing? But everyone is influencing something, right? And, and you find out that most times to get an Instagram influencer picture, you would take 20. They'll take like 20 to, oh, yeah, that's not, it's like, then, then that is not the, the 100% truth, right? But everyone wants to have the thing. Then, then guess what? The average person that's doing all this stuff, the picture is not just enough. You have to tweak it. You have to put all the filters. You have to change. Sometimes you have to change all the blushes or blush, of whatever you guys talk about or, or do. When you're done with it, that person no longer looks like a human being. It becomes like a different standard of, of beauty right? Everything is, is enhanced. But the average person that sees it believes it. But that's not true. That's not how that person looks in the morning. So we live in a world of, of fakeness. Everything is false. Don't you think the same thing in the body of Christ? It's the exact same thing. But here is Apostle Paul talking 2,000 years ago. One in a, which means at the time when he's teaching this, this was already happening. This is not a new phenomenon. This didn't start yesterday. It's been happening since the time of the apostles. Nothing is new under the sun. It just looks different. So this deception has been happening. Now we live in a world where it's easy to deceive now. It's easy. If you're a marketer, you know it's easy. You can start a brand new website tomorrow and act like you've been in business for 20 years. It's easy. Deception. So... This is what they were supposed to do, or this is what they are, or this is what they do. Now, the question that we should ask ourselves is this: What is the gospel? Okay. So we've talked about what they would do. They are changing it, and we've seen what the apostle has said about these people. See how the deception that they are doing. So what are they changing? So let's start off by going to the book of Ephesians, chapter two. Ephesians two. Ephesians chapter two. So Ephesians chapter two, we're going to start from verse one, okay? We're going to start from verse one. So what we're going to do is we're going to read from verse one to verse three, 
then we're going to skip somewhere else, then we're going to come back again to, to the rest of Ephesians chapter one, chapter two. So, and it says, and you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now is at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Okay, so let's break this passage down quickly, okay? So what he's telling them, right, is that we were all dead in trespasses, okay? We're all dead, all dead. There is no, oh, you know what? Oh, it's just, it's just a little blob. It's just a little blot in my skin. No, no, you were dead. You were dead in sin, right? Every unbeliever is dead in sin. Why? Because that's what God promised us. That is what God told Eve would happen. Or that's what God told Adam would happen. And I believe Adam told Eve. So that's what God told them would happen. When you eat of this root, you will surely die. That was it. The soul that seen it must die. They died. We were dead. The minute we were born, even though we are alive, we are dead to God. We have no life in the presence of God. We are dead. Okay? That is what was happening. That's who we were. We are dead in trespasses and sins. You see, it quantifies it. We're not dead physically. We are dead in our trespasses and our sins. Because of our trespasses and our sins, we are dead to righteousness. Okay? We are dead to righteousness. We had no life in the presence of God. None. We are dead. Okay, let's clarify that. It says, in which you once walked following the, cor the course of this world. That is, this is how the world is. This is what everybody is. We are all the walking dead. Just walking around without Christ. And we're looking at each other. Hey, what's up, guy? But we're all dead. We are decaying. But we don't realize it because to us, we are fine. It's just the same way as someone who have cancer in their body, right? Think about it. Someone would have cancer and not know until it's too late. But the cancer was always there killing them. They just didn't know that the cancer was killing them. That is how we are. Without Christ, that is who we are. We are dead. We just don't know it. We think we are alive. All right, but we are dead. Okay, so let's continue. It says, um, it says, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. We were following the prince of the power of the air. We are following Satan. We are following the spirit of hell itself. We are following him. He was our father. He was the one setting the way that we should walk. This is why when we come to Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life the true way, but we're following someone else on the way to destruction because he was leading the way and we chose to follow him. We are born into sin and then we kept on sinning because that's what we know. And then we kept following him, right? We followed him. So, um, so here's what it says. It says, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. We all lived in the passions of our flesh. Some of you might still be living in the passions of your flesh. Some of you might still be living in the passions of your flesh. This is the description of a dead man. We lived in the passions of our flesh, wherein our very, um, our very notion of truth, our very notion of love, our very notion of everything came in the box of the passions of our flesh. All right. Our concept of what is right and wrong is based off of the passions of our flesh. So the idea is this. What I believe is true is based off of how I feel about it, which is based off of the passions of my flesh. What my will wants, what I am longing for, which is always sinful. Why? Because it's like, oh, I want more money. I want all this. I want da, da, da. I want, I want sex. I want that. I want that. Everything in sin based off of the passions of my flesh. So my very mind was structured based off of the passions of my flesh. Why? Because I am following the path of darkness with the prince of the air. I am following him. So he's setting the, the standard before me and I'm following the standard and I'm loving the standard. I'm liking it because this is the standard that feels good to my flesh. But my flesh is enmity with God. So everything in me 
is doing the things that will condemn me. And I don't even know it. I'm just going. I'm just doing. I'm just enjoying my life, my best life now. I'm just having the best time. I'm just having the best time. So here's what it says. It says, carrying out the, the desires of the body and the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. By nature, by our very identity. You know, when someone say, well, this is who I am. This is how I am. Yeah, that's who you are. By nature, we are children of wrath. By nature. The very fact that we came out born with a seed of Adam that we have in our DNA, We are children of wrath by nature. And when you look at everything that we do, right? Because, and this is the problem with when someone thinks that they're a good person. It's like, brother, you're, sister, you're not a good person just because you did good deeds. You know, there are rapists out there that take care of people all the, de- all the time. You know, that would save a, an old, you know, woman from crossing the streets and being hit by a bus. That doesn't mean the rapist is a good person. You know, so, so the, point, the point is, when we think we're good people is because we did one good thing and we are judging ourselves based off of our standard. But remember that your standard is based off of your flesh. Remember that your standard is based off of the standard that the prince of the air has set for you. So now you're judging yourself based off of the standard that the devil has set. And now you're saying, I'm a good person based off of the standard that the devil has set. What? What? So, right there, what we find there is this. There is no good in us. We find that we're terrible. We find out that we're sinful people. We find out that people that have struggled. We find out that people that in our very nature are children of wrath. So that's what we find there. Let's look at Romans 3. And I'm going to be rounding up in a few minutes here. At Romans chapter 3. Romans 3 verse 20. Romans 3 verse 20. So what is the gospel? What is the gospel? What is the gospel? Let's look more about what the gospel is, okay? Verse 20. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. Okay. The point is this. You can't be good enough. You can't, you can't do good enough. You can't. Why? Because if you're trying to fulfill all the law and say, well, Lord, if I just fulfill all this law... The law is just literally telling you what your sins are. And it keeps pointing out your sin. That's what all the law does. The law is just like, oh, you're guilty. 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 Oh, oh, you see, you broke that one again. You're guilty. Why? Because the law does not empower you to overcome. The law does not give you the power to not sin. The law does not give you the power to please God. It just tells you what God has said. It just points out your sin. That's all the law does. Hey, you've sinned. Hey, you sin. Now you're aware of your sin. Now you're aware of your sin. So now you're not only given, being judged by God, you're judged by yourself. You are judging yourself too. Everybody's judging you because the law is pointing out that you are a terrible person. That's what the law is there to do, to point out just how bad we are because we don't realize how bad we are. Like I said, because we are holding ourselves up to the standard of the devil. So we don't realize how bad we are. So the law comes out to say, you are not good. You are not good. I, I know you want to feel like you're good. I know you think you've done enough good deeds. But you're not good when you think about it. If you think about the thoughts that go through your mind, you're not good. If you think about some of the things that you say, you're not good. If you think about the fact that you can't be consistent, you are not good. Even not showing up on time for things. Just that simple thing, oh, I I show up late. Just lateness in a sense makes us not good. Because now, if somebody else is there before you, you just wasted that person's time. So you didn't care about that person. You didn't care enough about that person. A simple thing, as simple as that, something that we don't even pay attention to, just tells you right there you're not good. Because if you were good enough, you would, you would think about people before you. You'd be thinking about, man, oh man, did I have to do that? That's what you'd be thinking about, but you're not. You're not. People come second. Oh, you know, I have things to do, bro. I had, okay, fine. I didn't have things to do. The point I'm making with this is just help us understand. The law is here to show you Just how non-good you are. Just how terrible we really are. So when we look at the law and say, well, you know, I I fulfill God's law. 
brother, sister, you, you do not. You maybe fulfilled one law. Maybe you did one, but now you think you did everything. You didn't do everything. Because if you did everything, there'll be no need for Christ. You'll be good. And here's what's so funny. If today I saved the life of someone, right? But yesterday I killed someone. The life I saved today does not make up for the life I killed yesterday. So your righteousness today does not make up for the unrighteousness you did yesterday. So you have all those unrighteousness. Even if from today you decide I was going to be the greatest person in the world. It doesn't change that you were unrighteous yesterday. It doesn't change it. The fact is this, when it comes to Christ, or when it comes to the gospel, first of all, we are not good people. And that is where Christ comes in. Christ comes in and shows us what good is. And doesn't just show us, but actually changes us to be good. And then tells us to rely on him for it, not on our power or our might. Now, we're going to continue this next week, um, you know, and next week's uh, next week we're going to talk about debt. Uh, and when I'm saying debt, I'm not saying death. I'm saying debt, as in the debt that we owe. So we're going to look at the debt from next week. Um, yeah, because I think I think the time is, is, is running low. But but let's let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's just, um, you know, pray for yourself. If you know, if you know that, uh, you know, if you know that you, 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 you get swayed with different teachings and different things here, here and there, and you, and you don't, you don't really know who is teaching the gospel and you just want to grow in the Lord and see God for who he is, minus the false teachers, just seeing him for who he is, ask God to help you. That he will direct you to his word, that he will show you his word, that you will see his word clear, that he will bring brothers and sisters, he will bring ministers around that glorify him, that will help you grow in him. Not, not agenda-based. People that just want to glorify God. People that just want to see what God is saying. Ask God that he will help you, that you will develop in Christ Jesus, that you will not follow men. You will not follow the, the, the so-called righteousness of men. That you will not follow that. I would say you will follow Christ. You will follow Christ. Ask him for help. And ask, ask Jesus to make the gospel known to you. That will open your eyes to realize that we cannot do this on our own. We need Christ. We need him. And without him, there is nothing that we can be done because we cannot fulfill this law. We cannot fulfill what we're supposed to fulfill. We cannot do it because we are weak and we are constantly falling. We are constantly falling. Ask God to help you. That he will help us. That he will help you. He will help you to do his will. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We glorify your holy name for your good. You're a good, good God. You're good. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for teaching me Teaching me your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me that I will take your word into this week and I will leave it out. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that we will all leave your word out, Lord. Help us, Lord, to see your word even clearly. We glorify your holy name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, so next week, we're going to be here uh, the same the same time, um, you know, the same time. And uh, yeah, so we're going to continue this. We have a few more, a lot more things to talk about with this. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, God will be glorified. All right, thank you. All right, let's say a prayer for our brother. Let's just pray the Lord will keep him. It's not about how well you start. It's about how well you finish. Pray the Lord will keep him and guide him day by day. That he'll never stop growing. The Bible says, the Bible lets us know we ought to go from glory to glory. So let's pray that the the Lord will guide his son from glory to glory. Father, guide him. Show him the way you want him to go. Let him not be confused. Thank you for the message. Let's say a prayer that we won't be deceived by a, 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 another gospel. Let's, let's pray that we won't be deceived by a false gospel. Let's pray the Lord will help us no, when we're listening to a, a preacher or anyone, that we'll be able to tell whether they're preaching uh, the real stuff 
whether they're preaching truth or whether they're preaching a lie. Help me discern, Father, anytime I hear. Anytime I hear someone preaching the word, let me never be confused. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. All right, welcome, family. This is a uh, welcome to the Way Fellowship. As you may know, we are meeting virtually for the uh, until further notice due to um, the city's um, city's orders, pretty much uh, of, uh, concerning COVID nineteen. Um, today's Sunday. We have service every Sunday from uh, if it's online. Well, actually in person too, from, from 10 a.m. to 11.30. So 10 a.m. to 11.30 here every Sunday. You, uh, If you want to know the link, you just go on our Instagram, at The Way Houston. Um, feel free to join us every every Sunday. On, uh, on Monday, as in tomorrow, we have prayer for half an hour called At The Altar. Um, pretty much it's a time to pray and uh, just time to get intimate with the Lord, really. Uh, and if you have issues or you struggle praying alone, maybe uh, you, you find it easier to pray with people, uh, Mondays would, would, uh, is supposed to help you get to the point where you can comfortably pray alone and go, go before the face of the Lord consistently. Thursday, we have Bible study, Bible fellowship, where we all kind of, uh, I don't want to say rub minds, but we all kind of sharpen each other. We go through a scripture. Right now, we're, we just finished Romans chapter 9. <clears throat> Sorry, we're going to Romans chapter 10. So this Thursday at 6.30 p.m., from 6.30 to 8 p.m., we'll have, um, have Bible study. Going to Romans chapter 10. You can read it beforehand, so you might have some things to share. Or you can just uh, come and depend on the Holy Spirit to show you new things as we read. Um, and then... Back to Sunday again. If you would like to, uh, maybe you, maybe maybe you're a new new convert, new believer, or you just are hungry for the word and you want to uh, dig into the word uh, with our brother who just shared the word, uh, feel free to contact uh, the way through any of the social media mediums. Um, there's uh, we have a we have a let me say a program or. Pretty much just meet and kind of just go into the word, dig deeper, just more food, more spiritual food for the week. Um, also, now is the time if you want to uh, give offering, if you want to give offering or tithe or uh, make a pledge or whatever it is. Um, here's, here's the time. Uh, we have, um, let me see, we have Cash App, we have Venmo, and we have PayPal. Okay, Cash App is The Way Houston. Venmo, The Way Houston. And PayPal rccg the way houston at gmail.com so feel free to give i'll say it one more time cash app the way houston venmo the way houston and paypal the way houston sorry rccg the way houston at uh at gmail.com all right we thank you we thank you for joining us uh feel free to come uh tune in tomorrow um for the prayer or Thursday for the Bible study. If you ever want to find out how to reach us when we're meeting, just go to our Instagram, and our link should be in our bio. All right. Okay. I've just been messaged. So I, I will just repeat the, uh, the offering thing one more time. Um, ca uh, Cash App is The Way Houston. The Way Houston. I believe we all know how to spell the and way. Houston, best city in America. I know you, have, I know, you know how to spell that. Uh, and Venmo, the way Houston. Okay, the way, the way Houston. Okay. And uh, PayPal is rccg, the way Houston, at gmail.com. The way Houston. Okay. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to meet virtually, uh, despite the situation that is going on and all around the world, actually. We thank you. We pray that you continue to guide us, help us grow in faith and not in fear, 
during these times. Help us draw closer to you, not out of fear, but out of love. Thank you. Guide us, Lord. Help us not be deceived by all the teachings out there. Uh, different gospels with different truths that will have truth but um, be mixed with deception and mixed with lies. Help us, Lord. Help us continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any concerns, help us remember to always take everything to you in prayer. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It, yeah, um, I tried to give uh, an offering um, to the way Houston on the cash app and there is no such thing. I don't, I don't see a choice okay. thing. So right. this is, this is what, uh, someone just messaged me about as well. Um, it, the, the, the T in the, in the is capitalized. The, 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 the W in way is capitalized and the H in Houston is capitalized. And I have just sent it to, to the chat. So the dollar sign capital T for the no space, capital W for way, and then no space, capital H for Houston. Thank you. I didn't know. I didn't know that the um, the uh, capitalization mattered. Thank you. As you can probably tell, I don't use Cash App. I just have cash. All right. Enough. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you. So uh, feel free, uh, ladies, gentlemen, brothers and sisters to uh, join with us tomorrow, 730. I don't know if I said that 730. Sorry, 7 to 730. Um, the link should be in the bio. We pray for half an hour, pray and worship. And then Thursday uh, from 630, we're in Romans chapter 10 from 630 to 8 p.m. Uh, we're uh, going to our link is in the bio as well. All right. We tune in next week. For debt, we will post the actual title in our, on our Instagram social media. Alrighty. Thank you. Take care, everyone.